All right. I know everybody's been waiting on this one. The Ducky 1-3 series is here. We have the SF version in house today, the 65% layout. Finally, we get the much anticipated hotspot, but we also get some revisions here that really help position Ducky back in a competitive spot in the pre-built keyboard market for the end of 2021. You ready? Let's go. So the 13 SF is currently in pre-order for 129 US. That's a $20 increase over the previous version with delivery currently expected just after the first of the year. This will of course also be available in 60% TKL and full size in a handful of different colorways. But today we have the Daybreak in this wild blue, yellow, and gray. Personally, I like it, but I know that a lot of people out there are gonna want a more neutral color, something that fits in with their setup a little bit versus something that looks more or less like a running shoe. The case here is still all plastic, but it has some more interesting geometry this time around and a really nice texture that gives the illusion of like bead blasted aluminum. I should mention too that my original 1-2 SF had some balancing issues when you hit keys in the top right or top left of the board too hard. This looks like it's been completely corrected here in this new design. On the underside, we still have the dual position flip down feet as well as the dip switch array, which can control some layout stuff. Cable connection is still left side mounted, USB-C. It's got a deep recess too, so no visible connector and there's plenty of room to accommodate aftermarket cables. The top of the case here is kind of mid height, so it's not like a completely floating switch design, but it still leaves plenty of the switch visible. Keycaps this time around are no longer shine through. These are really high quality double shot PVT. They're textured as well. They don't feel like chalky, but there is definitely a grip to them. The texture almost looks like a more refined version of the case. Included in the box, you'll get your cable, a handful of extra keycaps and the accent color, including this round guy right here, a keycap puller in matching colorway, and now a switch puller as well. Because this board is hot swap, so you can change out the switches. These sockets are kale colored this time, which I don't think I've seen before. These are north facing LEDs, which you don't see too often anymore. And I think this is a move Ducky made for the idea of just mass appeal. South facing sockets are generally preferred by the enthusiast crowd because certain switches interact with GMK or Cherry or OEM profile where the keycap actually hits the top of the switch housing before it depresses all the way. It's called interference. The downside to south facing is that they don't support the vast majority of shine through caps, meaning the characters light up. Enthusiasts don't care much about that. And even though this board doesn't come with shine through keycaps, there's still a really large market of people out there who would buy those aftermarket. And when it comes to those aftermarket keycap sets, you really have to be careful when you're shopping for the SF version specifically. You have two single U mods to the right of the space bar. That limits your choices a bit, but the real kicker here is the two unit right shift. That's gonna limit your aftermarket stuff to GMK, EPBT, some tie how kits, and some, not all, of even Ducky's actual sets. So just be careful before you buy, and the SF is the only version that has this issue. The 60%, the TKL, the full size, those are all standard, so pretty much any cap set will work. For switches, my copy came with Cherry MX clears, which have a pretty big tactile bump, and I'm glad you can swap these out. These are really scratchy feeling and sounding, and they have a large amount of ping. Even with the sound dampening inside this board, which is a thin layer of case foam and a thick silicone plate foam, it cannot control the ping on these switches. With those Gateron black inks in there, it obviously sounds and feels much better, but it does highlight some opportunities with the stabilizers. These guys right here are what gives most off-the-shelf keyboards their signature rattle. I don't know if these are manufactured by Ducky, but they are flat on the bottom, so you don't need to clip these, and they are factory looped, but only on the wire and just enough to cut it for most casual users. In fairness, they do sound better than pretty much anything out there from like Logitech, Razer, or Corsair, but you can lube these to get a better sound. Luckily, with the board being hot swap, it's a very easy process to access these, and and it really does make a meaningful difference. So with lubed switches and stabilizers, this board sounds and feels great. I'm not hearing anything negative at all, and the dual layers of foam really seem to be doing the trick. If you do hear any scratch at all in the modded version, it's just my fingertips rubbing on the actual texture of the keycaps. The 65% here is a 71 key layout, so with more and more retailers providing switches in packs of 36, you can cover this board with two boxes. We also have two additional LEDs under the space bar on each side now. Surprisingly, we still don't have any kind of control software here to make adjustments to the layers or the rebinding or the RGB. I used to applaud that a few years back when keyboarders 
software drivers were kind of sketchy, but now it's really nice just to be able to jump into software and make an adjustment like that quickly. Overall, I think regardless of which version you go with, these are now mechanically the best versions of the Ducky One series, unless you just have to have an aluminum case. They've really left us no reason to have to open or mod these boards in any way, which is good because opening like a one too many is a piece of cake. Opening this SF is definitely a chore. Two of the top screws are obscured, so you'll have to remove the case top and there's lots of little clips here and the end caps have to come off first. I broke a clip trying to get it apart to check out the inside so you don't have to. I like the new case design. The dual case foam does the job and it's great to have hot swap here. The only downside with that is the painted white plate will show every little scratch and scuff that comes with removing switches. As an enthusiast, it's easy to see the decision to use north facing sockets here as a misstep, but as a reviewer, I actually like to have a board like this that I can recommend to people that still want to use backlit keycaps. Colorways are going to be really polarizing, especially since none of the launch colors are neutral, and it's not just the caps. With the case also being wild colors, it limits what you can do with aftermarket keycap colors. I'm sure a ton of people would like to see this in just a black, white, or a space gray option. For value, I think we're pretty good here at 129. It's worth remembering that this isn't a bare bones. You are getting switches and caps. This truly is a buy it and use it keyboard that gives you the ability to experiment with switches and or tuning or replacing your stabs if you want to. I feel like I'm going to get the this or the Streak 65 LP comment a lot, and my feeling there is that neither one of these is better per se. You just have to pick which one is better for you. A Streak 65 LP is that solid, low profile design in safer colors, but you're pretty locked in to the caps, the switches, and the overall sound of the board. The Ducky definitely gives you more room to experiment, but it lacks software and it has those wild colors. In terms of which is going to perform better or be faster in game, the real answer is I don't think either one of these is going to perform better than the others, so just pick what you like. Overall, I'm impressed with the latest iteration of the Ducky boards. I'd wish for some more effective factory lube on the stabs, some software, and some safer colors, but mechanically and design wise, I feel like these are very solid. I want to thank Audible for sponsoring today's video. This is one of those rare moments as a creator where I get to partner with a brand that I'm already using in my everyday life. As somebody who spends the majority of his day filming, Audible gives me the ability to multitask and absorb content that directly affects my business, my personal finances, and my creative inspiration, which is hard to come by some days. One title that really impacted me recently is The Practice by Seth Godin. This is really the blueprint for overcoming common challenges like creative block, imposter syndrome, and really helping you to connect with patterns that keep you productive and moving forward. As an Audible member, you get one credit per month for any of the thousands of titles in their premium selection, and you also get access to their Plus catalog where they have podcasts, original entertainment, and even guided fitness and meditation. These titles stay in your library forever, and you can download them to listen to offline, so like commuting, long flights, a hike, or anywhere you don't want to use public Wi-Fi or data. And if you pick something you're just not feeling, you can swap it out for something new. In this holiday season, you can save 60% off your first three months. That's only $5.95 a month, and you get access to thousands of titles and the Plus catalog. If you're ready to get started, head over to audible.com slash badseed, or you can text badseed to 500-500 to take advantage of this offer. Big thanks to Audible for sponsoring today, and thank you so much for your time. All right, any questions for me, hit me in the comments, and I will catch you all in the next one. Stay up.